Hi, my name is Evan Edinger, and a couple weeks ago I uploaded a video on this very YouTube channel about how after living in the UK for 10 years, I've now gotten used to the metric system. But this was in response to a Johnny Harris video in which he stated that he just couldn't get used to the metric system. And a lot of times when I make videos like this, the comment section adds so much value that it's such a shame it just stays there forever. And so it doesn't, because today's video is a community one in which I look at some of your comments, which honestly surprised me, in response to all this metric system talk. Now, the comment that received the most upvotes, over 5,000 of you liked this comment, and therefore I would understand it to be agreed upon by most of you, is as a Swede living just below the 60th North Parallel, I think Celsius is very useful for weather because it's really important to know if there's going to be ice on the roads or not. Below zero, drive carefully. I think freezing is one of the most important weather-related aspects you need to know, so it makes sense having a system designed around freezing. And this is a comment which is very innocent in nature, but I think it suffers from an issue where your everyone is just used to the main system that they were brought up with, the main thing that was the topic of the video. And as much as you're saying, yeah, it's just so much more sense to say below zero is freezing, but in the US, we have the same thing. It's just not the number zero. I grew up knowing, oh, if it's below 32 degrees, be careful on the roads. And then if it's over 32, fine, flip off people while passing them in the fast lane, whatever you want. But the number changes, but the notion doesn't. So it's not necessarily a cool feature of Celsius that you know when to be safe on the roads. I don't really think this is actually that good of a point, especially one to be the most upvoted comment. So I'm just gonna politely disagree and say that it's just a matter of perspective. This is what you grew up with, so you might enjoy the zero being the number, but under 32, it's really just a potato, potato type situation even though no one really says potato. We say taters, precious. And this was a nested comment I found within another one that I found absolutely fascinating. But we have Ireland switched to the metric system over time between the 70s and 2005. The road signs were only changed to kilometers in 2005. What? <laughs> I would never would have guessed that while I was still alive, a country very close to where I live right now was still using the imperial and not metric like in Europe. Ireland, 2005? I was like 15 years old. I never would have thought that. From my upbringing, it was always the understanding that the European nations have pretty much always had metric, but 2005. And it's not just the case for Ireland. I also got another comment showing that in Canada, they went through the same exact process. And that's the US's best friend. They're like right there, they're neighbors. So we watched Canada go through the trials and tribulations and sorting themselves out into metric. And then we just watched and laughed. Next up, we have a, a little clarification here. Americans don't use imperial. They use the US customary system, uh, which is based on imperial, but not identical. Uh, so when I made that video, my purpose was to talk about the metric versus imperial imperial based systems. So yes, actually, if you didn't know, I did bring this up a bit. There are many discrepancies between imperial used in the UK still and the US customary, such as for instance, how many fluid ounces are in a cup slash pint. But it goes on to say, for instance, that the imperial has a ton that's set to 2,240 pounds. Something that I didn't know before I received this comment because I was always taught a ton is 2,000 pounds. What a nice round number. Who needs the metric when a ton is 2,000 pounds? But in the UK, it's 2,240. Nonsense. Looks like there's a mountain of differences. Oh. Another little minor correction I think is really important to note. Someone has said, with regards to cooking, the problem is not one of metric versus imperial per se, but one of weight-based measures versus volumetric measures. This was one of the main parts of my video on weight and how I find for cooking and baking, it makes no sense to use things like cups and such, which is volumetric as opposed to weight-based. Uh, imperial could be just as precise, uh, says Don Mac here, and reproducible as metric if recipes were given in ounces and pounds instead of teaspoons, tablespoons, and cups. Here's where I actually would disagree, because as much as you are kind of right in if everything was just weight-based for either system, it would be fine. It wouldn't because the imperial system isn't as precise. One gram is 0 0.0353 ounces. And I don't know about you, but unless you're doing some interesting things with your spare time, you're not gonna have a scale that goes down to hundredths of an ounce. And even if you did, that's a bit more confusing because as opposed to grams where you can actually just go down and then it's decigrams or go up to kilograms and things. Oh, I need to put in 0.15 ounces of baking soda. And th that's just not as easy to do. And so a lot of people, if they are sticking with weight-based imperial systems, are going to struggle with it. One of the biggest strengths of the metric system is that everything is pretty much divisible by 10. And so it's much easier to get very specific values as opposed to ounces, where 16 ounces isn't a pound. And I mean, I saw another comment in which someone said, no one even uses yards. For instance, you just stick with feet. Nobody says, oh, I'm two yards, four inches. And you know what? I've never thought about that before, but they're right. Even though we do have yards, 
We're saying six foot still because yards isn't necessarily something we use, even though it would make sense to say two yards and four inches. Well, doesn't matter. But then I guess, especially if you're someone that's under six foot, you'd have to say something like, I'm one yard, two feet and eight inches or something. No, that's not nice. <laughs> Makes more sense to stick with feet, I guess. Or just say you're 182 millimeters. Oh God, you'd be small. Uh, 182 centimeters makes more sense. Now, inevitably, when you make a video pointing out the pros and cons of any type of system, even if it is from a personal point of view, such as which ones I'm now using in my daily life after living in the UK for 10 years, you're going to find some very angry Americans that don't like alternate opinions. And so we have comments such as, face palm, if you buy stick butter, there are tick marks on it for tablespoons and half a cup of butter is a whole stick. Stop being annoying. And also, you talk about butter like most people don't use stick butter when cooking and baking. That is a very American exceptionalism type thing. We don't understand how it works in other countries. So we just assume that most people use the same thing that we do. We've never Googled it. We've never looked it up. We've never experienced it, but we just assume our way of life is the way it is for everyone else even though it's not. <laughs> Let's just say that these comments are totally good, totally great comments that have blown a hole in my entire video and say, yes, you know what? I should have realized that Americans sell their butter by the stick and that there are lines on it so you can actually measure the tablespoons of the sticks of butter. Well, the one thing that that doesn't account for what if, let's just say I wake up in the morning, I wanna spread some butter on my toast. I go and do that. Later on, I wanna bake. Oh no, I've already used some of my butter. So now it's not necessarily a half cup. I don't know how much exactly is in there because I've used just an indiscriminate amount of butter to put on my toast. So now I have to have an entire brand new stick of butter to know that that is a half cup of butter. It is a bad argument, my friends. <laughs> I'm getting some butter. Now, for those of you Americans here that want to know what it is like inside of the UK, here, for instance, we don't have sticks of butter. We have big old blocks. An entire block of butter here is represented with 250 grams. Good old metric system. And in fact, we have a very similar system of having little things on the wrapper to designate how much you're taking out, except instead of it being a bad decision, volumetric tablespoons for incisions, it's actually grams. 25 grams, 25 grams, 25 grams it makes a bit more sense in this regard. Now, the same issue that I just talked about comes up with this technique of, sure, if I use some of this butter, it would be more difficult for me to then gauge using the wrapper, but that's why we have scales, so that we can actually measure things using weight, as opposed to saying cups of butter. What's on the inside? Butter. <laughs> what would you do if I just like bit into this? Also, please forgive me, my voice is very uh, <clears throat> bad. I've been a bit sick this week. Bit more of a meta comment here, but we've got, if you would have used Johnny Harris in the title, you would have gotten more views. Well, I think I did pretty well on that video, despite the fact that I didn't use anyone's name in the title, unlike today's video, because it just felt like the best title for the content that, in my opinion, made it the most interesting. I didn't necessarily want to be like, let me just use this person's name for SEO. I did obviously put Johnny's face in the thumbnail, so I know the YouTube algorithm is so much better than it used to be, it will be able to find out Oh, people that like this person's channel also click on this video and watch it more. Therefore, it's able to decipher similar audiences are there. So you don't have to necessarily do that these days, says the guy that put the name in the title today. I also think it's funny someone saying, you could have got more views doing something. And I'm like, well, like I said, the video did really well, especially considering my normal views are anywhere between like 50 to 100,000 views. So the fact that as of recording this, it's over 300,000, I think I know what I did. Uh, <laughs> I feel like once a month, I have a video that really goes well with the majority of my audience, but because I have so many different niches I'm interested in, it's really difficult to basically entertain everybody. I'll be like, oh, I wanna talk about languages in this video, or, oh, I wanna talk about American stuff. And then some people are like, not into that, not into that, oh, into that. So I think that's just the case with me continuing to be a OG YouTuber making videos on lots of different things and not just laser focusing on one topic. It means it's way more difficult for me to one day hit a million subscribers because they'd be all over the place and they wouldn't watch all the vids, but, uh, it allows me to feel content with my content. One thing I forgot to bring up in the temperature argument that I'm kind of kicking myself over because it's actually a really good argument for Fahrenheit and a reason that I do miss it a little bit is just how much easier it is to communicate certain temperatures in Fahrenheit than it is in Celsius. Easily, you can say, today's gonna be in the 80s, the 80s, 
two syllables, 80s. You know a really nice range of what the temperature is gonna be. The 90s, the, you could say the high 70s, the low 80s. This is a range that is so much more easy to understand, maybe from my upbringing, yes, but you're given a scale of 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equivalent to about five degrees Celsius, which makes a bit more sense and it's very easy to communicate. Now, if I tried to tell you what the 70s meant in Celsius, for instance, that would be between 21.11 degrees Celsius and 26.11. Now we can just round that to 21 to 26. Now, sure, hypothetically, you could say the low 20s and get a similar range in Celsius or the high 20s, but that'd pretty much be <laughs> the main bit of the summer. It's not like 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, which you've got four different levels of summer in the US. The UK, primarily, we're just going to have low 20s, high 20s all summer. Maybe you'll get maybe a couple days of 30s, but I guess it doesn't make sense to have that level of quick communication on temperatures if the variation isn't ever quite that large. And so that is just something I do prefer about the Fahrenheit system. It's easier to convey certain temperature ranges. And it just sounds nice. Which I will say, obviously that's based on my upbringing. And I do have to acknowledge that's a bias that I have, but I've lived in both systems and I do just prefer that level of communication. I think it's cool. Let me have a comment here from Odin Sage that says, the irony about John's video is he's a language guy. And the thing with language is to be fluent and speak comfortably, you have to reach a point where you stop translating every single word in your head. And yeah, that's pretty much bang on. If you're going to constantly be trying to speak a language and thinking about your native language and how you'd say it and then translating it, you're never really going to be fluent at that stage. You have to get to a stage in which you are just thinking and expressing yourself natively in that extra foreign language. So it's kind of the same in the metric system or the imperial if you're moving to the US. God forbid. There really is nothing more frustrating than trying to follow a recipe and finding three different answers for how much a cup is. Yes, you'll never really understand the frustration of trying to Google like how many grams a cup of milk is and then finding three different web results that all have three different values because it's like, well, is this an imperial cup? A US customary cup? Is it whole milk? Ah, there's so many different variations. And some of you are like, hmm, doesn't really matter, just eyeball it. We want exact measures. My dad was saying that when they did the metric conversion in Australia, all the hardware stores were giving away free metric rulers to help with the change. That's how you enact change. Australia, always showing everybody else up. That is such a great idea. Make it easy for everyone, give everyone free things. Who doesn't like a free thing? My most received comment on that whole video though was one that was essentially, we're not water, we're humans. Well, humans are made of 80% water, so knowing water freezes and boils in our bodies is pretty useful for survival. I was actually just trying to make a stupid pun, uh, but I'm glad that everyone latched onto that and was like, actually, um, you're 80% water, so saying we're not, I know. <laughs> I know, I also had fourth grade biology. Note for young people and Americans, it helps to understand if you know the original British monetary system. Well, of course you have two farthings is one hay penny, two hay pennies is one penny, three pennies is a thrup penny, bit, two thrup pences is a sixpence, two sixpences is one shilling or bob, two bob a florin, one florin and one sixpence, half a crown, four half crowns, 10 bob note, and two 10 bob notes is one pound or 240 pennies, with one pound and one shilling being one guinea. <laughs> no. This sounds like one of those logic puzzles you're given in elementary school to see if you can like logically reason how big certain things are by using inner algebra. And pretty much, I feel like I've gotten that exact example before of one florin is two hay pennies and a half bit. Nonsense. I love that it continues by saying the British resisted decimalized currency for a long time because they thought it was too complicated. Ha, ha, ha. See? Everyone can change, even the wild Brits and their hey penny thruppences bobs. We have a comment here from a German on the positives of the imperial system for driving. Uh, they seem to like that miles per hour is so much easier when you're driving a stick shift, a manual car. I have made a video about driving things recently if you haven't seen that yet. But essentially you're switching gears and what gear you need to be in can easily be seen by what speed you're supposed to be going. So usually if you're going 40 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour, you would be in gear four, I think. I don't drive a manual car, I live in the 21st century. Somewhere between negative five and 40, spoken like a true American. Actually, no, my negative five to 40 was actually spoken like a Londoner because I was thinking, I'm gonna give a little bit more leeway, but in London, for the most part, a full year, you might get down to negative two, maybe in Celsius. And then you might, might get up to 38, maybe. This year, so far this summer, which is towards the end of the summer right now, the max we've gotten up to is maybe 33. So this year is essentially somewhere between negative two and 33 degrees, not a big scale. Whereas growing up in New Jersey, 
in Celsius terms, boy, sometimes we'd get down into like negative 20 and it also goes up to 42 sometimes. So way more scale. So to correct you, it was more of a Londoner thing to say, thank you very much. In addition to the imperial system, there is another terror, the frame rate derived from power supply frequency. Oh, you don't have to tell me about that. It took me a good six months after moving to the UK to finally fix my camera. No matter what I did, every time I filmed a video in my little college dorm, I would have these weird bands coming down and I was so embarrassed, I didn't know what to do. I'm trying to make it as a YouTuber. I think I had like maybe 9,000 subscribers at the time and there was just weird light bands going down. And it turns out it's because my US camera that I brought across was in NTSC mode, which is used to the power supply of the US which is 60 Hertz. And so it's refreshing at a rate of 60 times a second. Whereas when I moved to the UK, that is at a frequency of 50. Hence why, if you're looking at this video, I actually shoot at 50 frames per second now. Most Americans that wanna shoot high frame rate will use 60, which more closely aligns with the US's power grid. If I wanted to use a more cinematic frame rate that most people in the UK would shoot with, I would use 25 or extra wanky cinematic 24. I actually just shoot at 50 because I like how smooth it looks. And it's kind of a way of being like, look how nice I can make my video look on this camera, thank you. I'm from the Pil Philippines. I'm from the Philippines and we pretty much use metric for the most part, but we still use quite a few imperial units owing to our heritage as an American colony. Most of us know our height and weight in feet and inches and pounds by fabric by the yard and US paper sizes such as letter 8.5 inch by 11. That isn't even a good number. Oh my. This is one of those things that I truly never understood for many years after moving to the UK because I see a piece of paper like this and I go, Oh, intrinsically from all my years of school, this is eight and a half inch by 11 inch. What an obscure grouping of numbers, but that's the way it is. In the UK and the EU, they have such an ingenious system where this is actually called an A4 piece of paper. And if you put two A4s next to each other, you have an A3. Four A4s or two A3s, you've now got an A2, and it goes up that way and it goes down. It's so much better than the US's system of just choosing numbers and just, paper. Also, this is an 11 plus exam. One day I will take this. I swear I printed it out like eight months ago, but I've just been so busy and I have not taken this exam, but stay tuned at some point. I need an editor. I recently bought a few metric tape measures and switched over to using metric for all my home projects. Millimeters are awesome. Absolutely. If you think that I did any of the DIY in this house using the Imperial system, you'd be crazy. I literally had mapped my house out down to the millimeter so that way I could know exactly where to put the boards in my living room, which is like 4,200 millimeters long on one side of the wall. You have to know this stuff if you wanna be precise and make things look the way you want it to make it. Unless I wanted to use like three eighths of an inch. Nope. Also, I'll link my flat tour if you haven't seen it yet because it's probably one of my best videos I've ever made. I think Johnny underestimates just how quickly culture can change. For the first half of my life, you could put together a list of words that mean different things in the US and the UK. Harry Potter introduced an entire generation of Americans to British slang. Yes, I remember finding out about snogging and being like, I have no idea what that's meant to mean. Uh, for those of you unaware, it's just like passionate making out. <laughs> That was used all the time in the Harry Potter books. And I was like, what the heck is snogging? So yeah, I do like that with the modern age of the internet and more trading of culture and cultural words and things, we are able to understand way more. And one final comment we have, I think the most important thing is what you said at the end. Who oh, saving the best for last. When you live somewhere where only one system is used and omnipresent, it's really hard to think in a completely different system. If the US were to switch to metric, it would cause some trouble for the first couple of years or so. But after that, people who don't actively oppose it with all their being would get used to it. And within three or four generations, you'd have trouble finding someone that remembers the imperial system. All it takes is allowing yourself to get used to it. Exactly, I, that's pretty much what my conclusion was. Anyone can learn anything given the effort and want to learn something. Actually, I was just about to say something else and I wanted to quickly add, I think it's really funny how many of you thought I was doing an ad read in the bit about weight because I was in my kitchen wearing a cooking hat and everyone went, ho, 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 wait a minute, I'm about to skip this. And I'm like, whoa, guys. No, that's not sponsored by a certain brand. I actually am sponsored by them in like two, three weeks, but I just thought that was funny, the amount of comments going, nearly skipped a whole segment. <laughs> that's why I try during ad reads to have little bars so that you know like where the ad is located and such. I find it respectful of my audience's time. Hopefully I make the ad an interesting one, but if not, that's your free will to do what you want. Just as it is your free will to subscribe to this channel if you wanna learn fun facts every Sunday. Thank you very much for watching today's video and hopefully I'll see you back on my channel next week. Also, only 30% of you probably know that I end each of my videos with ukulele because by that point, people just drop off. So it's just for the special few. Fun fact, 
I actually added ukulele to the end of my videos because I was watching, I think, a random JonTron video and he just ended with him playing the guitar. He only did it once, but I went, oh, what a, what a multi-talented guy. I can play ukulele. I like playing ukulele and writing little songs. I'll add that. And that's one way, for instance, that YouTubers will take itty bitty tiny little inspirations from loads of different people to develop their style and who they are. Who I am? I guess. <laughs> this video has no sponsor and that's okay. I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. Hopefully Johnny doesn't mind, oh no, that I used his name for S-E-O. <laughs> I'm so quirky.